Good morning. Is um, everybody can hear me now? Um, well, thank you, Dave, for the introduction, and also thank you, uh, DDN, for uh, having me here and quickly running through what we did and what we're doing with large-scale storage and data intensive science at uh, at KIT. Um, I have to speed it up a little bit, not because of your time, but of my time, um, because we ha I have to attend uh, another meeting at our booth, uh, which we have at, uh, at, at the conference here. Anyway, so um, uh, a quick uh, run through is that um, uh, the analysis facilities that we run, I'll talk about a little bit about that. The data management support that we have, uh, have started um, uh, a year ago um, for, for data intensive science. This is more or less in the line of, uh, of uh, the previous speaker, Mr. Hanlon. And um, I'll also give some views of storage in the future or things that I think are um, something that we see or something that we, uh, uh, that we have discovered and we'd like to, to address to, to people in the, uh, all of these engineers in, in, in engineers in, in DDN that they can uh, think and work with us um, how to solve that. Um, <coughs> so, um, Computer Center of uh, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, that is SCC. Um, we, uh, we run several uh, large facilities, but above all, it's the IT uh, uh, core for the university campus. And we do a lot, do a lot of research, um, which is divided into three uh, partitions. Um, data management, which is obviously the, ones, the most important one for me. <laughs> there is uh, computational science, does high performance computing, so I'm more in this, in this area, familiar with that, with that area. And there is a dynamic IT infrastructures, which is a, is a guy, large basket which, which uh, picks up all the, all, all the other topics that are ne necessary to run a computer center and provide services for, for science. Um, <coughs> So large scale data, we have um, two large projects there. One is the, the, the grid car computer center. It's a tier one center for LAC computing, the, the, the CERN initiative initi 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 um, activity. Um, although everybody knows that the Higgs has been found, they continue measuring. So we will also increase the storage there in, the, in a few years. And since a few years we have the the large-scale data facility started quite small, it now grew, grew to uh, something like 4.5 pet, petabyte storage. Um, and this is specific support for uh, science beyond uh, or next to uh, physics computing. Um, because uh, um, these people from, from LHC, they know how to, how to run systems, but they also do the, 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 the software, lots of them themselves, which is uh, not something that all these sciences in this group here, or these non-physical sciences can do or um, are interested in. Um, and last but not least, um, there is also a lot of uh, uh, um, large data uh, going on in high, high, high performance computing in the high performance computing um, for KIT and which we, which we also do for the state of Baden-Württemberg. And there are some quite large systems as far as I know. I'm not sure, um, I'm looking at Roland who's also is representing the HPC part in, of, of KIT if this, uh, if this is correct of uh, the latest numbers. Um, DDN storage. Um, we have um, we have a lot of those storage in, in both uh, or in these three uh, in these three areas that I mentioned. In Gridka, we run exclusively, well, almost exclusively. There's still something from uh, from uh, from a former tender of years ago, uh, almost uh, exclusively uh, DDN storage. Um, this runs with uh, GPFS. Um, in, a, in, a, in a multitude of clusters. And uh, the most significant thing there is that it is running X through D and D cache as a storage management software. It's not data management, it's actually storage management. And in the LSDF we have a SFA 12K, GPFS, and this runs mostly industry standard protocols as opposed to the um, uh, grid care environment. In HPC it runs Lustre, and this is also opposed to the, the GPFS operation that we have in the large-scale data facilities. Um, this, all of this um, runs down to this list of, uh, which I just compiled, uh, I think it was two days ago, so I'm not sure if this is actually 100% correct, but it's, uh, it keep, keeps changing and, 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 and some people may, may even be buying uh, DDN storage 
while I'm speaking, well, Tom should know. <laughs> um, uh, we started out with a, I think it was an 8,500, is this correct, Tom? Or was it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in 2004. Um, I have to get rid of that tune here. What do I do? Do I lower it then? Or? Yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, if, you're, if you're not bothered with it, I can live with it. Um, this system was our first uh, um, DDN system and it was put in somewhere in, an, in, a, in a corner because no one at that time uh, expected DDN to survive that long in our uh, environment because it was all IBM at that at that do in those days. Um, and when we uh, cleared the area where this DDN system was, uh, was standing and running, it was in 2009, people came to me and said, well, there is still a storage system, what do you want to do with it? Is it still in operation? It was in operation, we almost forgot about it. It was running there for five years, um, not having any support. I mean, there was a power supply which was broken at that time, which they saw on the, on the light, but it was still working and running fine. Um, without every, uh, but it, it, it was one, one of the interesting things because we had to switch it off to um, enable the other, to allow the other systems to be moved in. Uh, since then that has been increasing steadily and I think that we're now at about 17 or 18 petabytes of capacity that is including the HPC, HPC um, activity that is in our uh, second computer center. So Gridka, uh, this is the familiar list of uh, HPC experiments, virtual organizations that are running in, at Gridka. Um, you, of course, you have the large ones here at the at the at the side, uh, Atlas and CMS and all these people. Um, and the other ones, I'm just it's it's a kind of a historical thing. Um, I, I think that uh, some of them are even uh, not running anymore. It, well, they're still running uh, jobs at Gridka, but it's uh, I'm I'm putting them putting them on here because these people now would like to have archived data, and they still need to ha need to access access these data. So it's not any longer on spinning. Data disks but we need to do some caching with tapes and all these uh, so they're still important and um, they they <coughs> they they still are familiar with uh, with Gridka but uh, the actual jobs and uh, and the capacity is coming from these guys here to the, to the right to the left um, storage um, as I said already, it's it's a uh, it's something that is not common in in in, in an industrial sense. Uh, um, uh, the, the, they they use uh, uh, homegrown software, um, something like FTS, which is the file transfer service, something like Dcash, um, which is a system that was developed at Daisy, and this all combined orchestrates uh, orchestrated by some some VO specific data management. They're trying very hard to change this to come to come more on on on, on par with, um, with with industry standards or with developments that are now known and 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 and, and being uh, researched. Uh, it's very difficult, of course, because they have a running system, and since the the data streams are not um, are still increasing, it's very difficult for them and for them is the WLCG organization to change that or to move it to a more standardized way. <laughs> the individual products um, like Dcash and 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 and, and uh, Grid FTP, sorry, and FTS and also XRUD, which is not oh, it's still over there, um, are of course trying to come <coughs> to become more of part of the, of the mainstream uh, storage management stuff, uh, storage management solutions. Um, you may also see something like here this as a REM. I think this was a fine idea to my personal opinion, um, but it um, got a little bit uh, off the road by, um, by a bloated features uh, request from all these different FIO specific data management. What this does, this SRM is in fact a wide area a management interface for, it, for data management. Um, uh, it can, you, you can tell that, that how much, you can ask the, for instance the SRM how much uh, storage space do you have and I, do you allow to have a storage, are you, uh, can I store um, data for a specific VO or a specific user. Um, it's, uh, it was a very fine development but um, uh, it, it's stuck since, uh, since a few years and I don't see similar 
activities uh, happening um, uh, at the moment in, 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 in data management areas. Of course there's IROTS, but uh, that's a completely different approach. Um, <coughs> so these storage units that um, I'd like to address um, for, sh for a short moment is that we run the, the D cache and the XRO D systems on top of small clusters. So um, these are two or a few nodes of, of, of GPFS cluster and below that there is a, either a 9900 or recently an SFA 10K or SFA 12K. Uh, meaning that um, um, wh why do we use GPFS in that case? Well, it gives us some benefits, uh, I won't go into the details here, but it's also a familiarity with the, with the file system which was very robust, robust, is still very robust, and it gives us the possibility also to move servers from one node to the other and to, to have some redundancy in there. Okay, so that was all about LHC computing, physics computing, and since a few years we have moved our uh, focus also in the direction of, of other sciences with the so-called LSDF. Um, and um, one of the main um, drivers in that case was biology because they had a new microscope, I come, to back, come, come back to that later, um, and this microscope was, was supposed to deliver around a thousand terabytes per year. It doesn't do that yet, but they come quite close because last year they moved, um, I think it was 400 terabytes of data, and they're um, <coughs> working on, a, on an improved, um, improved system which may actually, um, um, well, increase the data rate this year already. Uh, gene sequencing, one of those things that is not very heavily done at KIT, but our sisters in uh, sister faculty in, uh, in Heidelberg, um, they'd like to store data and then it will be much more than the 50 terabytes per year. Um, that's why I say there is an archive for partner institutes. These people, they, um, they are planning to move uh, lots of data in our direction. Um, materials research, usually at the Synchrotron Radiation Institute, um, lots of storage uh, demands, requirements from there. Climate research people, they are very special because they like to keep the data for a very long time. It's not so much as a processing uh, problem, I think, but uh, it's more of a, of a, a long-term uh, duration storage. Um, and since recently we actually, although um, I'm from uh, the Helmholtz Association, which is a uh, hardcore uh, beta physics uh, uh, engineering uh, science. Um, there's also activities in the direction of uh, humanities and uh, so libraries, art and social sciences and these uh, kinds of sciences. Um, um, and a recent recommendation of, uh, which is not something special, but uh, uh, from the German research uh, bodies is that all this data has to be kept for at least 10 years. Um, so the large-scale data facility, well, um, as I already mentioned, it's, uh, it's something that is especially there for non-physics computing, although um, there are some physics experiments using uh, the, um, the large data facility. Um, we have an integration with uh, Hadoop, there is a Hadoop cluster um, tightly integrated with the, with, the, with the storage and the networking. Um, in the here we also do um, development, we'll try, we'll work on tools, we do our own uh, um, data management things there and, and, and try, try to see what, what actually works. Um, and what we're also doing is providing storage, and this is the, the, the Dropbox thing uh, for the state of Baden-Württemberg, because also in the, as the, um, <coughs> uh, Mr. H uh, Daniel Hanlon uh, mentioned, um, indeed our scientists are also storing on Dropbox, and we'd like to, uh, to counter that with, uh, with our own solution, which is now actually running in the LSDF uh, using, um, um, I forgot the product that they, they chose. Um, the LSDF is, it is a very um, stripped down uh, layout of course. It has Hadoop system, um, some hat nodes on the Hadoop stringed with uh, 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 GPFS in, uh, with several nodes connecting to a DDN system. This is the SFA 12K and then there is a huge uh, Sonos system. Um, uh, which does the bulk of the of the storage, and both storage systems are on the back connected 
to, um, to tape systems, which will be, incidentally, HPSS next year. Um, at the moment, we run this with TSM, which is, a, which is a pig for large data. Now, if you ask these, um, these, uh, these sciences, uh, what, um, what do you want with, with data? As I said, well, they're not familiar with large-scale data. They have their, their sticks and their CDs and their DVDs. Um, they want to have, of course, data um, available everywhere. They want to have the data um, accessible immediately. Uh, it must be there for a long time, it must be protected, it must be even secure. I mean, you shouldn't be able to, to, uh, to, to use the data, to think of, uh, of data from, from, from genetics or, or biology. And um, these people do not actually know um, how to handle the data or, um, or they want to use the data that is from other sciences. Now, this is something that um, is a whole thing, um, uh, um, a range of demands, and um, we have tried to work on that with, um, with this data management initiative, um, data re research into data management. If you look at, um, I'm coming back with this with this drawing um, uh, because I think it's very um, um, common to see that um, data generated in science follows more or less the same path. You have uh, you have some, some 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 instruments there. It goes into some some store, store and then it's ingested into a system which takes care of the metadata um, and, 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 and labeling of the stuff. Then it comes into a large repository where it's either moved into, a, into an archive and then it gets accessed by either users or directly or by analysis systems, all this. So this, this workflow, um, scientific data workflow as I tend to call it, is, um, is, is quite familiar for a lot of sciences and if even usable for, for things like, like things in publications or collections. So this is explicitly humanities and this is science and this is uh, the, the, the publication science. So you can, you can say, for instance, um, <coughs> people from uh, uh, economy in, the, in, the, in, these, um, in these, um, and these sciences. So gamma sciences is sometimes called. So measurements, yes but also these collections follow more or less the same procedure. And then, if you look at that, 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 that workflow here and um, <coughs> try to, to analyze these things, then you'll come up with uh, um, following, to my opinion, very key components of, of this data management. One of them that was already mentioned is this authentication and auth authorization thing. Uh, I think, by the way, authentication for storage is rather is doable. You can use the moonshot or you can use the uh, identity providers uh, um, uh, solutions. Um, the, the thing is, however, if you want to do it together with computing, because then um, this entity has to be checked every time when you go to a computer. Um, so that's the, that's a challenge uh, for us there. Another thing is data transport. Remember this movement from data from one canister to the other canister, to from one storage entity to one other storage entity storage entity. So data transport is one of those things where you have to keep track of data um, and you need to know where, um, where, where the copies are and, 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 and the, uh, the access and access rights have to, be, have, to be um, have to be secured and of course you need to do this in a, in a kind of secure way. Um, this goes with a metadata infrastructure of course and um, and there is also some um, archival that needs to be done. So these, these five uh, or six um, key components uh, to me are, are those things that are actually necessary for, for proper data management if you want to have some uh, unified way of, of, of taking care of data for sciences. Um, so these Key components went into a project, in our case, um, the LSDMA project, Large Scale Data Management and Analysis. I just kept the abbreviation. Um, 
And here we try to coordinate data management solutions, data management initiatives for data intensive science. It's a, it's a Helmholtz initiative, meaning um, this is one of those uh, large uh, research centers in, uh, in, in uh, research consortia in, in, um, in, in Germany. Um, as I said before, it's, uh, it's hardcore science with, with a lot of measure, 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 measurements and engineering. And some of, um, famous, some of the famous institutes are uh, cooperating in this, um, uh, in this initiative. And we're trying to expand, uh, well, we're not trying, we're, we're actually expanding this over the whole Helmholtz Center. So what we're doing in this project is, is working on um, uh, scientific service in infrastructure based on, 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 on experiences from these uh, larger institutes and put this into 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 production or into reality for an infrastructure. It's kind of it's a kind of EU dot if you're familiar with that project for Germany. We're looking, of course, into um, into a tight integration with uh, with in with science and the development of the of the data life cycle uh, of, of the, the data life cycle. And in this, coming back to data management, we focus on computing data access, preservation, and the storage systems. You may, people that are familiar with these um, institutes may, uh, may see that uh, these things match more or less to the, uh, to the, to the partners in this, in this project. Um, integrating it with, uh, with science, uh, as I said, um, that's, that's being done by having these science areas that are representing, uh, represented in the Helmholtz Association um, connected to small units of, of, of people that actually work with, um, with scientists on both ways, the people that know storage, the people that know computing, the people that know data management or are working on data management, together with the people that work in the field or in the domain. It turns out that <coughs> many of those demands are very different. Although I've sketched that there is a similar workflow, um, the, actual, um, the actual procedures behind it are, are, are much different. So you may have different um, types of authentication, you may have different types of data movement, or you may have dip different types of, uh, of ar archival for these different uh, science domains. Um, an example for what we already working on, which we did, because it's actually a very large issue in the uh, in, in the Helmholtz, is uh, it's called uh, the light source, uh, the pr pr um, uh, workflow, uh, building up a workflow for um, for something like um, um, uh, synchrotron uh, data, and this is done in a, in an institute, um, uh, in fact in KIT. Um, where they have uh, built up um, actually a workflow pipeline to process the data coming from the te detectors at, uh, uh, at the synchrotron, which in fact are cameras, um, moving the data step by step through the whole pipeline and, and results coming, uh, coming to the scientist's desktop. And this is all done within the LSDF. Um, by the way, you can see in a, a nice example, we have uh, in the booth, uh, and, uh, there is a, they used, um, I think it was a, 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 some, a small insect, they, they put on the tomo tomography, tomograph and uh, imaged this one, and, and with 3, 3D imaging, uh, they found some nice results to, to show you if you come there. Um, I'll skip this slide um, and think about some storage. Uh, Topics. Um, and this more or less um, bridges uh, um, to the talk with uh, that uh, James Comer gave, uh, which has some of those uh, ideas that I saw on the on the on the blackboard or in the whiteboard of DDM, uh, which are also on this on this list here. Um, so one of the things that um, uh, we are wondering and we're working on is how do we get the caching going? Is this has to has this to go to the application to the OS or do we put this into the storage? It's one of those things that, um, as, you, as as I said before, 
um, large part of the storage uh, or the data, the, the storage management that we do is with Dcache and, and XRD, so we have actually control of everything below there, but sometimes we do not have this. Um, many sciences, they run um, applications that we cannot open or cannot, uh, cannot change. So then, where, where, how do, how would, how do you um, do caching in that case? Um, then we see a tendency to move this block back up for the stack. So people are, uh, there, is, there is so much computing power um, available in these servers to, uh, for, for high throughput computing that you can actually now do your rating and your Eurasia coding all this in the server itself. Um, and we're working on a, on a, on a small project, project with, uh, with an SFA 12K system in, in a few weeks. I, I think it starts with, uh, with people from HLRS where we actually r try to run um, the XRD or Dcache code within the SFA 12K to see if this brings us something. Um, now, that data integrity is one thing. I saw on the slides of uh, James Goomer that there is a lot of work being done by DDN to do that, to, to bring data integrity into the, into the storage system. The problem, however, is that uh, the application doesn't know about this. So it can still be that the application writes data to somewhere out of the, in, the, in the WAS world, for instance, and do not, does not know if the data is actually the data that was ingested into, into the archive. It's not an end-to-end -end thing. However, it helps, of course, a big... Uh, uh, for, uh, um, uh, this helps, of course, for the operational, from the operational uh, viewpoint also within the, um, in the computer center. Now, archives is one of those things that I can talk a long time about, won't do this, but um, if I want to stress that archives in our case is, for the coming 10 years, it's tape. Um, I'm saying 10 years, it may be longer, but um, I hope to be retired in <laughs> maybe 10 years. And then, but anyway, the, um, the, it's tape, it's not disk. So there is a lot of disk, of course, uh, being shipped. But um, for if you if you actually like to to run exa exabytes archives, which we need to do because of these recommendations and because of the data flow, um, there has to be some HSM connection. I was very happy to see that you're working on that. It has to be some HP, uh, HSM connection. Although DDN, of course, is a disk storage. Um, it, I mean, that's your mainstream thing. Um, Tape doesn't go away in the large data centers. Um, and then a uh, general question, um, maybe it's a kind of a invest, uh, inv 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 inviting for a discussion, how can, can storage help with data management? Because the storage management and data management are two different things. Um, and WAS is in the middle. So you're going into one direction. Um, I have some ideas of how it can help. Um, I'm willing to discuss this or of, of, uh, uh, after this talk. And um, I'd like to finish with some conclusions. Um, yes, we're not looking at data storage anymore. People from HPC, they tend to squeeze the, light, the last bit, uh, the last byte per second out of the storage system. Um, the data management people do not actually care for that that much. Of course, it has to be fast, it has to be quick, but um, uh, we're moving into the direction where we like to know where the data is and how to move the data. Um, we also recognize that large facilities must do a little bit more than just offer, here's your batch system, here's your interface to NFS, and, and be happy with it. Um, and at KIT, we've started research for big data to help, data to help to solve data management issues in multiple science domains. That's my talk for today. Thank you. <laughs>